Okay guys, let's solve the rest of the homework problems, homework one problems. Uh, this is what I want to do mainly in this video. So uh, I already solved problem question one, I believe, and question three, the questions about the trigonometric identities. Uh, let me solve question two, which has to do with some complex number manipulations. Right, so so it kind of like uh, starts with some problems where you mix and match different complex numbers and, and to add them and multiply them together, you have to do um, transformations essentially so that so that you can combine complex numbers together. For example, in this problem, one plus j, you need to add it to 256 degrees. So you have the number here in rectangular representation, you have number here in polar representation, uh, uh, and we cannot add them together easily unless we transform the numbers, right? So the easy thing we can do first is that we can take one plus j and then we transform 256 degrees to rectangular form. The transformation is as follows, 2 cosine 56 degrees. Uh, typically in side of cosine you would use radians, but here I'm using, uh, from context, it's clear that I'm using degrees. When I go and use a calculator or, or, a, or a MATLAB or Mathematica, you have to be careful that, that sometimes the angle, mostly the angle is expected to be in radians. Not all the time, you have to be sure have to make sure what the expectation is for the trigonometric functions, right? But this is the transformation. It's going to be 2 cosine 56 degrees plus j, 2 sine 56 degrees. So the sum is going to be 1 plus 2 cosine 56 degrees plus uh, 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 j, 1, the imaginary part is 1, plus 2 sine 56 degrees, right? And now I want to go to my calculator. In this case, I'm using Mathematica as a calculator to evaluate this. So going to Mathematica and using it as a calculator, I can evaluate uh, 1 plus 2 cosine 56 degrees and 1 plus 2 sine 56 degrees. Notice that I'm dividing the 56 by 180 and multiplying it by pi. I'm doing that so that I can turn the 56 degrees into radians. Uh, when I do those first two calculations, I get, uh, ignore the rest of it, we will use that later. But when I do those two calculations, I'll, I'll get uh, 2.11, 2.12, let's say, and, and 2.65. Uh, so this is what I get. And now uh, to continue the calculation, What I need to do is I need to uh, take this sum and divide it by 330 degrees. So I need to take 2.12 plus j uh, 2.65 and divide it by 330 degrees. So what I need to do, whenever I now, now I'm going back to division. So whenever I do multiplication or division, it's always easier to work in polar form. Whenever I do it, uh, addition, it's always easier to work in rectangular form, right? So this is equivalent to one third minus 30 degrees times 2.12 plus J 2.65. Why is that, by the way? Uh, uh, right? I, if I take one over 330 degrees and I multiply it by one third, minus 30, one third, minus 30. I didn't, I multiplied by one, nothing changed, right? I end up with one, zero degrees, which is one. And the numerator we have one third minus 30 degrees. So I just took the, what's in the denominator and put it in the numerator. That's all I, I, I uh, um, did. So what I want to do now is I want to, so to facilitate this multiplication, I want to turn this number into into a uh, 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 polar form so that I can multiply those two. So let's let's do that next. There's an error you have to correct while doing. Okay, so I want to turn this number. So this the number is, is 2.1112 plus j 2.66, let's say. I want to turn this into, into a, a polar form. All I need to do is calculate its magnitude and its phase, right? So to calculate its magnitude, I take the real part plus the imaginary part, but I flipped something here. I should have 
180, I'm turning from degrees to pi, right? So I need to have 180 pi, and here I need to have 180 pi, right? So the magnitude of that number is going to be 3.398. And then is this this still needs to be corrected so this also needs to be 180 remember I'm turning everything to radians so I need to divide by 180 and then multiply by pi okay. so I'm I found the magnitude first now I want to find the angle so an angle is just the arctan of the imaginary part over the real part and then the angle I get is going to be in radians. I'm, going to, I'm just turning it in degrees. Hence the 180 over pi at the beginning there. So if I do this calculation, I end up with 51.4465 uh, uh, degrees. So let's take those numbers back. And essentially what I did, I converted this number back into polar form. And I end up with this thing. So I just need to multiply them together easily now. 3.399 over 3 and then the angle is just 51.45 minus 30 what's 50 minus 30 20 so it's going to be 21.45 degrees all right so now this whole result i need to square it that's a problem right so i'm going to square it to get the final result the final result is going to be 3.399 over 3 squared and when I square the angle it's just I'm summing the angle or, or by, twice or multiplying it by two so I end up with uh, 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 42 degrees point nine, 42.9 degrees right right 21 times 2 is 42 and then 0.45 is 0.9 uh, I just have to do this uh, uh, Manipulation, let me do it quickly. So it's going to be 3. Point, we said it's going to be 3.399 over 3. Exactly 3.39896 over 3 squared. 1.4. 2.8. That's the approximate result. 1.28. Uh, uh, 42.9 degrees. This is the final result. Okay. Let's go now to question part B of, of the question. So we said we wanted to solve part B, right? So uh, let me take a look at it. Part B states that uh, 1 over j over 12 minus 3j so 1 plus j over 12 minus 3j magnitude so we're taking the magnitude of it so we're converting it into a real number plus 545 545 degrees okay so uh, let's start with 1 plus j over 12 minus 3j we need to divide this. Right? We can always, the easiest way to divide, we said in the class, is to multiply by the complex conjugate 1 plus 3j over, sorry, 12 plus 3j over 12 plus 3j. Right? This doesn't change a thing. We multiply by 1. So this becomes 1 plus j times 12 plus 3j over what? Over, this becomes 12 squared plus 3 squared, right? Because 12 plus 12 is uh, 10, 12 times 12 is 12 squared, and then, and then, and then minus 3, minus j3, plus j3 becomes uh, uh, 3 squared, because j times minus j is just 1, right? And then the, the imaginary part cancels itself, right? Because minus 3, 12, j, and plus 3, 12, j cancel themselves, okay? So end up with this expression, that's the division, so uh, um, let's do the numerator. So we end up with uh, uh, 
right? So I need to do this multiplication, so this becomes 12 minus 3, right? 12 minus 3j times j is minus, and then plus j uh, uh, 12. So I'm doing this now, and then this uh, 3 plus 3. So 12j plus 3j. Again, over 12 squared plus 3 squared. So this becomes 12 minus 3, 9. Right? Plus j, 12 plus 3, 15. Over, uh, um, yeah, 12 squared plus uh, 3 squared. We can uh, manipulate this, that's fine. But what we're interested in is the magnitude of this before I do the simplification. So the magnitude of this is going to be just 1 over 12 squared plus 3 squared. Then the magnitude of, of uh, 9 plus j15 is going to be a square root 9 squared plus 15 squared. Yeah, that's the magnitude. Okay. Now this whole thing is going to be added. We're going to add to it 5. 45 degrees. What's 545 degrees in rectangular form? Right? So 545 degrees in rectangular form is just 5 cosine 45. What's cosine 45 degrees? It's square root of 2, right? 1 over square root of 2 plus j 5 sine 45 degrees. It's also square root of 2. Right? So this would be the result. The result would be 1 over 12 squared plus 3 squared square root 9 squared plus 15 squared right plus 5 over square root of 2 plus j 5 square root of 2 and we can uh, do the number crunching and find what the result would be let me do this quickly right now right so we want to uh, I mean you use my mathematica as a calculator so let me first uh, expand the font. I don't know why it sticks to uncomfortably uh, small font. So 1 over 12 squared, 3 squared. So let me start with that. 1 over 12 squared. Oh, it went up there. 1 over 12 squared plus 3 squared. And what's the rest of it? The rest of it is uh, square root 9 squared plus 15 squared. Square root 9 uh, squared plus 15 squared. Good. Plus 5 over square root 2 plus 5 over square root 2. So this is the real part. And again, it will not simplify it unless I tell it to turn it into a numerical value. Right, so that will be 3.654. Right? Oh, did I make a mistake here? This should be 3, right? This should be 3 squared. Okay, 3.65, right? And then the imaginary part is just going to be 5 over square root of 2. So I just take this part, calculate it. It's going to be 3.535. 0.65 plus j, 3.54. Okay? And now I want to do part C. I think it's the final, oh no, the, the one before the last, there's C and D. So we want to do square root of J, right? And we said that there should be two square roots, okay? So uh, here it helps to go to polar form. So square root of J, J is in polar form is just 1, 90 degrees, right? Square root. And square root of 1 is just 1. What's the square, what's the square root uh, uh, 
for complex number like, like this. Well, we find the square root of, of the magnitude, which is one, and then we divide the, that angle by two, right? Because if I take 145, multiply it by 145, I end up with what? 190 degrees, which is the same as J. So this is one of the square roots of J, right? But there's another square root. See, this, this is the thing about the square roots in, in complex numbers. If you take the square root, you always get two square roots. If you take the nth root, you always get n roots. And there's a specific technique for finding all the roots, and I'll show it right now. The technique is simple. The technique is just, you know, if you take, let's take it, I mean, we could do it in exponential form or we could do it in polar form. Let's do it in, in, in exponent, in polar form. That's fine. So if I take any number, let's say 145 degrees, and add to it plus 2 pi n. Well, 2 pi n, if, if I was taking radians, if the angle was radians, but in this case, the angle is expressed in degrees. So if I say, if I add to it 360 degrees, will, every, will anything change? No, nothing will change. I have the polar representation of the number. Well, the graphical representation of the number, and then I rotate it by 90 de 360 degrees, I reach the same number, right? So plus 330 degrees times n, right? I get, I get, uh, 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 the same number. So, so let's start with, with the number we're trying to find the square root of, which is 190, which is j, right? So I said I can take the square root, I can, if I do 90 degrees plus 360 degrees times n, nothing changes. Whatever n is, n, if n equals 0, n equals 1, equals 2, 3, whatever n is, I always get the same number. Rotation by 360 degrees doesn't change a thing. I find the square root of that. That gives me square root of 1 is 1, the magnitude, and then I divide the angle by 2. I end up with 45 degrees plus 180 degrees n. Okay, so that's interesting. That tells me that, that if I take n equals 0, I, I get 1 square root. 1, 45 degrees. If I take n equal 1, I get the other square root, which is 1, uh, 45 degrees plus 180, which is uh, uh, 225 degrees. Okay, so j, this number, has two square roots. It has this, 1, 45 degrees, and then it has the other one, which is uh, 180 plus 45 degrees. It has this other number, which is 1, 2, 2, 5 degrees. Those two complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, are the two square roots of J. Meaning if I take this number, multiply it by itself, I end up with 1 times 1 equals 1, and then 45 plus 45 gives me 90 degrees. If I take this number, multiply it by itself, I end up with 1 times 1 gives me 1, and then 225 plus 225 gives me what? Gives me uh, 450 degrees, right? 450 degrees is just 360 degrees uh, uh, plus uh, 90 degrees. So, so take this number, multiply it by itself, I end up at J again, right? So, uh, yeah. So this is part C. Part D is solved in exactly uh, uh, the same way. So I'm asking for the for the uh, third square root of third th third root of cubic root of one of unity, right? And again, in the complex number domain, any number, any number, because remember, any number is a complex number, even if a number does not have a complex component. It's still a complex number because this is equivalent to 1 plus j is 0, right? But any number, when you take a radical of it, you will, the number of roots will be the same numbers as the degree of the radical. So we should expect three roots here. Sometimes in mathematics, they're called the roots of unity. But really, any number inside here is going to give me three distinct roots. And it's the same trick. What is 1? 
one is just one I can write it as one zero degrees that's one what one that's what one is square root of three right furthermore I can write it as one zero degrees plus 360 degrees times n nothing changes right if I do this if I rotate by 360 degrees square root of three aha uh -huh. so then I do this this cubic root I end up with one and then zero divided by three is zero What's 360 divided by by uh, 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 three? I believe it's 120. 120, 120, 120 is yeah 360. So it's 120 degrees n. Okay, and here we get the three roots. If I take n equals zero, the first root is going to be just one zero degrees. The first root is just going to be one. That's the first root cubic root of of one. And then the second cubic root is going to be 120 n equals uh, 1 so it's going to be 1 120 degrees and the third root is going to be n equals 2 which is 1 240 degrees I'm expressing everything now in polar form I could express this in either exponential form right or or, or rectangular form so this is polar and exponential this would be expressed as 1 1 e j what's 120 i have to do everything in radians in exponential form so for so 120 is just 2 pi over 3 360 over 3 and then this is going to be 1 e j 240 is 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 uh, 2 pi over 3 times 2 so it's 4 pi over over 3 okay so this is exponential form and this is polar form okay but those are the three cubic roots of, of one right so the roots will be like this will be one one multiplied by itself three, three times gives me one and it's going to be one at an angle the complex number at, at at 120 degrees with a magnitude of one and then the one at 240 degrees and you can see that if you multiply this by itself three times you go 120 once 120 twice 120 thrice and you end up back at one if you multiply this by itself three times so you end up going this is 140 once and then you end up going uh, sorry uh, uh, 240 once and then you end up going 240 again twice and then you end up going 240 three times and you go back to one okay if you go larger n you, you get the same thing if i go n equals three i get one of those three numbers was equivalent to one of these three numbers All right, so i can stop after three okay but this is how i find the cubic roots of unity okay i hope that's clear and then after that i want to go and solve the, the final problem in the homework um, right so the first thing we need to do for this problem before being able to solve any of of the um, parts of the problem so the problem asks for um, let's see asks for asks for power dissipated and energy and all of that well the first basic thing we need to solve is the current through through the circuit right before we can solve for any of those other other requests right so the circuit is like this it's like 10 volts we have a switch and this is a simple circuit we already know how to do this right then we have a resistor and then we have an inductor uh, the inductor I believe is yeah 4 millihenry the resistor is 0.5 ohms right so what's the time constant for this circuit the time constant this is a serious connected circuit so this is easy right the time constant is just going to be L over R it's going to be 4 millihenries over 0.5 ohms so that's going to be 8 milliseconds or 8 times 10 to the power minus 3 seconds okay uh, so this form of the solution is going to be I equals this is the current going through the circuit at T larger than 0 right it's going to be just K1 plus K2 E minus T over tau what's 1 over tau 1 over tau is going to be 125 right so it's 1 over 8 times 10 to the power minus 3 so it's going to be 10 to the power 3 over 8 
right? 125 eight times is, is 1,000, right? 125 two times is 250, 254 times is 1,000, okay? So it's 125. So I of t is going to be k1 plus k2 e minus 125t. What's the initial condition for the current? Well, uh, when the switch is off, the inductor should be zero, right? Current should be zero. So I0 equals zero equals k1 plus k2 e to the power zero is one. So zero is k1 plus k2. And then finally, I infinity at steady state. So we said at steady state, the inductor behaves like a short circuit, right? Because our steady state, uh, the current is not changing anymore. So, so the voltage across the inductor should be zero. So it behaves like a short circuit. So at steady state, the current should be just a 10 volt divided by the R, which is 0.5. 10 divided by 0.5 is just 20 amps. Right, so it equals k1 plus k2 e to the minus infinity is, is zero. Right, so k1 equals 20. Therefore, k2 equals minus 20. So that gives me the expression for it as simply being 20 plus minus 20, blah, blah, blah. We take 20 out, we end up with 20 times 1 minus e minus 125t. And that's it. That's the expression for i, and that allows us to instantly solve part A, which asks us, ask us for the power dissipated in the resistor. Uh, the power dissipated in the resistor is just going to be, as a function of time, is just going to be I square R, right? That's the expression from, for power, if you remember from networks one, right? So I just squared I, I end up with 20 squared, which is four, 400, and then I square 1 minus e minus 125t. Let me simplify this. I end up with 400. Oh, r, sorry, there's an r here. So there's a 0.5. So I end up with uh, 200. And then let me square this expression. I end up with 1 minus 2e minus 125t. And then square the last term, which is e. So e x squared is just equal to e2x, right? That's a basic property of exponential. So this becomes e minus 125 times 2 is, is 200, and then 25 times 250 is 2 minus 250t. Okay, so this is p of t. Right, this is part b. Part c asks for the energy in the inductor at steady state, EL at steady state, and we know the energy from network one, we know that the energy in an inductor is just half L I squared, right? So the energy of the inductor at steady state is just half L I at infinity squared. What's I, uh, I at infinity according to this expression at steady state? Well, e to the power minus infinity is zero, Right, so it's 20 amps, right? So it's going to be half L 20 squared. It's going to be half 4 millihenries and then uh, 4, 0, 0, 400. Right, so it's going to be 2 millihenries times 400. So it's going to be 800 millijoules. Or expressed in joules, it's going to be 0.8 joules. And then uh, uh, what's next? Okay, the next is the, is the expression for the accumulated energy in the resistor, right? So we know the power across the resistor. We already, already found that, right? So power is dE by dt. So accumulated energy is just the inverse of that. So E in the resistor, T, is just the integral of P from 0 to T. So all we have to do is take the expression for P and, and integrate it. So if we do that, we end up with 200 integral from 0 to T of three terms. 1 minus 2 E, uh, uh, e minus uh, 1 to 5T plus e minus 250t, and we know how to integrate exponentials. That's very simple. We don't even need it. Need an integration table. We don't even need that. So it's going to be 200. One, we know how to integrate t, 
t from 0 to t is just t. And then we integrate this term. So we, we have minus 2 e minus 1 to 5. The anti -der derivative of this term is going to be just divide by minus 1 to 5. And when I differentiate this, I take minus 1 to 5 down, and it cancels out the minus 1 to 5. And this is, goes from 0 to t plus e minus 250t over minus 250. This is the antiderivative. Take, take it from 0 to t. So I evaluate this expression. I end up with 200. And then t, then express this at, at 0, at, at, at t. This becomes plus 2 over 1 to 5 e minus 1 to 5 t, and then uh, minus, plug in t equals 0. So this is it becomes minus 2 over 1 to 5. And then finally, I have here minus 1 over 250 e minus 250 t, and then plug in t equals 0. So this becomes minus, minus becomes plus e to the power 0 is 1, 1 over 250. Simplify this, I end up with er of t equals 200, t plus 2 over 1 to 5, e minus 1 to 5, t, minus 1 over 250, e minus 250, t, and then I, I turn this into minus 4 over 250, right? minus 4 over 250 plus 1 over 250, I end up with minus 3 over 250. And this is the expression for the accumulated energy dissipated in, in, in the resistor. Uh, the final part is just a plotting problem. Let's do that. So I went to Mathematica. You could go to MATLAB or whatever plotting software you want to use. It's fine. All right, so I plugged in the expression for P as a function of t, I plug, plug, plugged in the expression of e as a function of t, and then I plotted the power dissipated into the resistor, and then I plotted the energy uh, uh, accumulated, accumulatively dissipated into the resistor. So you can see when the power is small, low, the energy is low, and then as the power gets to a steady state, constant steady state at the end, I end up with a ramp. Right? If constant power equals a ramp of energy. Right, the energy will keep dissipating in the resistors, resistance forever. It's always going to be extracted from the voltage source, and it's going to be continuously dissipated into the resistance. All right, um, this concludes the uh, solution of the homework. All right, guys. Uh, uh, so we'll continue next time with, with just lecture material. All right, thank you.